I point this out so as not to sugarcoat the contrast between what the founders perceived as valued Christian education and its goals with those of parents and students. The disparity is noteworthy. Yes, a good portion of parents did send their children specifically to ACS because it was a mission school. But not all its students were Christians or indeed converted to the faith subsequently. As it is sung, our students hail from China's plains and the land of the rising sun. We have many sons from India's strand and the islands of the main. From inception, accepting DNA, accepting diversity was ingrained in ACS's DNA. It saw no contradiction to its Christian roots and purpose and accepting students of different faiths and beliefs. Even today, about half of the student population in ACS are Christians, while the rest are a mix of Buddhists, Hindu, Muslims, and free thinkers. But all found common ground in the values which ACS sought to nurture in its students. Over the decades, ACS continues to strive at providing her students with the best holistic education possible to become well-rounded thinkers and doers. The ACS emphasis on academic achievement, Christian service, and strength of character were hallmarks long before they became fashionable, or as it is now, explicit goals of education. And through the years, that motto, the best is yet to be, continues to be a rallying call to every student. And indeed, our hearts, our hopes, our aims are one. No discord air will sever. We stand together for the cause of ACS forever. ACS, I'm glad you're still listening. ACS has excelled in various fields of endeavor led by men and women who embody the ACS spirit of giving and serving to the school and the community. ACS schools have distinguished themselves not only academically, but also in the areas of sports and the performing arts. And today, you're regular recipients of the annual awards under our Master Plan of Awards. They include the Pinnacle School Excellence Award won by ACSI, I have to be fair to my constituents, so I'm going to announce the other awards won by the other schools as well. The School Distinction Award won by the ACJC. <laughs> as well as the Sustained Achievement Awards given out to ACS Barker, ACS Junior, <laughs> and ACS Primary. ACSI was also the first school in Singapore to offer the IB and has, uh, the, the, That wasn't the accolade. I haven't come to it yet. And has consistently produced a lion's share of students in the world who obtained a perfect score of 45. I'm talking about last year's batch. <laughs> These achievements are testament to an unwavering pursuit of the ACS mission to provide an all-round education and to develop every student to their fullest potential. So I think objectively you can say the ACS had a glorious past. But my second theme, what of the future? Ask yourself, what would the mission and vision be if ACS was started today, instead of 1886? After all, we are no longer a poor community with uneducated masses and high unemployment. In Asia, we have the highest per capita GDP. I thought we were second to Japan, but we looked and Singapore surpassed Japan last year in that regard. So highest per capita in Asia. What is the role of ACS? What is the role of ACS in this social context 
with an educated and relatively affluent population in a multiracial and multi-religious society in today's Asia, not in Asia of 1886. I think you will have your answers, the board will have their answers, but I would like to share with you three brief thoughts to this question. Firstly, ACS must continue to do what it does best, which is to build men and women of character who excel and serve to improve themselves and the lives of those around them. Build men and women who will respond to a higher calling and challenge. Second, I'm also heartened to note that the ACS schools have continued to emphasize community service, and I was extremely delighted that the chairman, Mr. Richard Xiao, announced the beginning of the ACS Foundation. This is important, especially for ACS students. Let me tell you why. In the minds of many Singaporeans, ACS is seen as a school for the privileged, even the elite. And I'm not surprised, because the figures bear them out. About two-thirds have university-educated fathers, and half have university-educated mothers. This is more than two times the national average. As part of the outreach to the community, I know that students, ACS students, have over the years worked with various groups under your CIP and benefited and provided service contributions and donations to welfare homes, to elderly, to special schools. And I think that you need to continue this and step it up because ACS students need to do this to reprise our founder's mission to be in the midst of mainstream society to uplift it. When Re Reverend Odom came into Singapore, he could have very easily stuck to a British, small group of British or expatriates, but he did not. He went into the mainstream to uplift it. ACS should ensure that the students from low or lower middle income families are not denied opportunities to receive quality education. I have heard anecdotes of students being afraid to apply for admission to ACS and other independent schools for fear of not being able to afford the fees and other items. I reiterate once again that no child should be denied an education on account of financial difficulties. We have the EduSafe Entrance Scholarship for independent schools to the top one-third of the PSLE, co PSLE cohort. And those who need further assistance can get them from the independent school's financial assistance. In 2010, 200 ACS I students, about 7% of your total enrollment, received this scholarship. And students can also avail themselves the EduSafe merit bursaries, the scholarships, the grants. I'm glad ACS itself offers a slew of scholarships donated by individuals and corporations. ACS must continue to do its part to ensure social mobility for the able so that no one is left behind. Third and lastly, the ed ACS education must produce independent learners but who know what and why they believe in. In today's modern society, the challenge is too much information from diverse sources. In, this, in that context, we must build into our students a moral compass which equips them to test a surfeit of ideas and alternate lifestyles. They must learn how to reject those which harm them and society and hold firm to the values that will stand the test of time. If ACS can continue to hold true to its mission, to be a beacon of truth and light, an emblem of grand endeavor and excellence, whose students see themselves as leaders of men and agents of good and positive change, then your future will be even better than your past. The best for you is yet to be.